morning. Good morning, boys and girls. It's Saturday, the 24th of June 2017. A warm welcome along to this morning's United Kingdom Talk. And of course, being Saturday, today we record a little show for uh, Upload Radio, which we'll uh, kick off with in a minute. It will be great. If we had a couple of phone calls, people to talk to on the phone uh, on the show this morning as well. So we kicked it off uh, almost almost immediately. Just after I tell you last night, we had our karaoke in um, King's Cross at the Central Station. But great night last night. And it was someone's birthday yesterday. Uh, if you ever watch our karaoke streams, then you will know the lovely Roy. He's a tall bloke, wears shorts and glasses. And he's such a wonderful, wonderful character. He was 72 years... I know! 72 years old last night. And he's never had anything wrong with him. Isn't that amazing? 72 years old. I don't know. I don't, I, do you know? I don't even think he takes pills or anything. For anything at all. Usually you get to a certain age and you've got to have pills for something, haven't you? I don't think he even takes pills for anything at all. 72 years old. And he runs about like he's still 18 years old. That is just fantastic. Isn't it? And everybody loves Ray. And there was a cake and people bought cards. I think he had a couple of gifts in there as well. So that was wonderful. Now, if he didn't make it last night, uh, and um, you're coming down on Monday, uh, bring your card along then. I'm sure he won't mind that. It's a couple of days late. OK, so Roy's birthday last night. A absolutely fantastic. Really was. Um, on yesterday's show, Heidi uh, called into the show. What was it, Thursday? No, Thursday night. On Thursday night's show, uh, Heidi called into the show. Excuse me. Oh. I've got to stretch my mouth. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. What's happening there? Do I need to blow my nose? Oh, don't say it's a sneeze coming. No, I, don't th I think we're all right with sneezing this morning. I think we're all right with sneezing this morning. Um, uh, yes, Heidi was mentioning uh, that the countdown at the beginning of the show, the first three minutes where it's just a clock, that's all it is, like a numbers going down, she finds that incredibly boring. So can we have a video up there instead? And uh, I said yesterday, and I, I, I got to thinking more about this yesterday after the show had finished, and I thought, what well, that is an excellent idea, an excellent idea. So what I will do is probably do some... Static videos. That that's that's a video with moving, but not the camera moving. If you see what I mean, I just leave it in places for like fifteen seconds, and then move on to the next picture and the next picture. And I'll probably do that in various places here in Bracknell, and of course all over the place wherever I've been. I might even take out some of the some of the. Or, 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 or would you? Or do you think we should do like an elongated version of the film at the end? I mean, of little bits and pieces that I've done and seen and what have you. I'm not, not quite sure which one to do, but I think that was an excellent idea. And then when we get to the two minutes, we go back to the little diamond thing that you, the, the square boxes. Uh, I have found one with four squares instead of three. So we might, well, I think I'll probably keep that for the last two minutes because I quite like those graphics. So thank you very much for that, Heidi, if you're watching this morning. I think you are. And um, uh, we will take care of that, okay? All right. Um, <clears throat> OK, so we'll um, good. Well, we'll start the upload radio show right now, boys and girls. And there's lots uh, to chat about on the show today. Uh, I, I want to do newsreaders. Do you remember newsreaders? You got a favourite newsreader? Have you? I want to do that this morning. So when we get going, please feel free to join in. As I say, a phone call would be fantastic. One or two phone calls uh, that go within the uh, radio show as well. All right. So you ready? And we'll start. Two lots of 29 minutes. All right. That's how we do it. So here we go then. Right, let me just uh, start my clock. Start that there. And you'll get a little... I don't know why I keep doing that this morning. I, f I feel like things are stuck together, like me eye. I go, do you ever do that? Do you ever do that? Like that. <laughs> Do you ever, um, and my nose. It feels like the bottom of my nostril keeps sticking together. Just that one on the on the right. Do you get that? <laughs> Isn't it awful? Right, here we go. <laughs> I can't, don't make me do it if you laugh. Hang on a minute. Can't do it if you make me laugh. Right, ready? Here we go. Ah, 
And a very good morning to you boys and girls. It's Chris Reardon with this week's United Kingdom Talk here on Upload Radio, our weekly chat show where we talk about this, that and the other. That That's all it's all about, boys and girls. Uh, we record on a Saturday morning, actually, in front of a, uh, a live audience who are with us uh, on Facebook Live. And we must say good morning to some of those people this morning who are there already. Good morning to Ray Reynolds in London. Good morning, who says, hi hi, campers. Good morning from Maplin's Holiday Camp. Oh, I used to love of holiday camps, Ray. Pontins. We went to Pontins all the time. I think we once went to, only once went to Butlins. I don't know why we only went once, but I used to love Pontins. And such a small company now to uh, what it used to be, isn't it, eh? Our first Pontins that we ever went to, I always remember the first one, uh, Seacroft. Seacroft, which was in Norfolk on that east coast where it's always cold. And I remember being on the beach I think I must have been about 12 years old, something like that. Ha- oh, no, earlier than that. 12? You know, no, about 12, 11 or 12 years old. Happy, happy times at Pontins Holiday Camp. Where I think I would have been an excellent blue coat. I should have done something like that. I mean, of course, the pay is absolutely dire. But most entertainers don't come into the job for the money. And then that you know, that's true. You speak to great actors and people like that. I think you find most of them don't come in it for the money. They come in because they love doing what they do. And if you strike lucky, then loads of money comes. You know, a bit like DJing, uh, karaoke, hosting quiz nights. We Honestly, none of us really do it for the money. Just, not least to start with, anyway. I certainly never did it for the money, and I don't now. I've done all right. I mean, I'm not super, super rich. Don't live in a great big mansion or anything like that, but I'm happy. I mean, I can't think of anything worse than being paid a million pounds a year to sit in an office in front of a computer counting other people's money. How boring would that be? No, 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 no. We like to be out with a microphone, chatting away. That's what we like to do. Good morning, Ray. Uh, Morning to Jerry Millen, who's joining us this morning. Diane says, good morning, Chris. Uh, Loving the karaoke streams that you do. Yes, we do karaoke streaming, boys and girls. Live streaming on Facebook. If you want to join me on Facebook, uh, I do do a live show almost every morning. You can join me on my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK. All right. Facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK is my Facebook name. Same on Twitter, but I, I, I don't use Twitter much at all. It's very boring. I don't understand it, to be honest. That's the real reason for that. Good morning to Rod Brown. Uh, Wayne Martin's there. William McKay says happy birthday to Roy because uh, it was one of our karaoke people's uh, birthdays. On Saturday this week, uh, we celebrated his birthday on the Friday. His actual birthday was on Saturday, the 24th of uh, June. So happy birthday, Roy, for then. And we had cakes and cards and things like that. And lots of people came down. Uh, if you didn't manage to make it on Friday and you want to come Monday, is likely to be there on Monday as well. Uh, Roy is now 72 years old, runs around like there's no tomorrow. He's as mad as a hatter, just like myself. And everyone loves him. Everyone loves him. He's a real character. He'll be at Central Station on uh, tonight, Monday night. Uh, that is, what is the date? Uh, I don't know what the date is. Uh, the 26th of June 2017. He'll be there. Monday, the 26th of June 2017. So bring you along your cards. Perhaps a little gift as well. No, isn't he, he quite likes toys. He likes, um, he bought um, a couple of years ago, he bought the Playmobil plane. You know that thing that you, it's, it's a bit like a, I think like a, Oh, Christ. Air, aircraft? No. Air, air... Is it Airfix? Are they those planes that you stick together? Is it Airfix? I'm sure it's Airfix. We buy the glue and... Please don't start sniffing the glue while you're putting the plane together, for Christ's sake. Don't blame me if you start doing that and you die. Don't be so stupid. Right, sticking the bits and planes together. I think it was a similar thing to that. And he bought himself one of those a couple of years ago. So he quite like little toys and things like that. Uh, William says, are you OK? Yes, I'm OK, William. Very well. Nice to see you last week, sir. Uh, just watch the All Blacks beat the Lions. Is that rugby? I used to do rugby at school. I was very good at rugby. Oh, yes. Very, very. I was fullback. They couldn't get past me, my friend. No, no, no. Big Butch Chris was standing there halfway down the field, waiting for these other lads to come towards me with their large ball. They never got past me once. Never. And it's funny, actually, when I was at school, um, in secondary school, I went to uh, the London Oratory School, which is in Fulham, an excellent school under the headmaster of Mr. John McIntosh. Uh, He was the longest headmaster. But when I first went there, we had Mr. Gaffney. Oh, he was evil. 
He would cane you for the slightest thing. Uh, he was there for about two years, but then he retired, and I think Mr. John McIntosh uh, took over. It was a really excellent school. And we, uh, but in the first few years, sort of year one, two, three, and four, I had no interest in rugby or football or anything like that at all. But I got to the fifth year, and I thought, oh, I'll have a go at this. And I started, and of course, because... And at school, you tend to stay with your same class all the time, don't you? Do you know what I mean? Um, and... They, 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 because I held back for four years, you know, I'd be on the sideline, didn't really want to get involved. You know, I used to come out of those changing rooms. I thought, oh, God, we've got to go and play rugby this morning. I'd be one of those that was hanging around on the lane, not really wanting to do anything. And they kind of left you alone. So suddenly in the fifth year, I got involved and we were playing once. I remember being on that, on the, hanging around the side there. And suddenly these boys were coming running towards me. And I thought, well, well, do you know what? I'm going to have a go at this. And I took off. I, t <laughs> I took off. My team was there. And I suddenly took off. And this boy running towards my goalposts was now on his own. He was outrunning the rest of my team. We were trying to catch him. Well, I suddenly took off. And I run to work. And all these other boys just suddenly stood there, open mouth. Is that Reardon over there? <clears throat> Is that Reardon running? And I, and I launched myself, grabbed his legs and took him down to rapturous applause from my teammates. Well, that's all I needed. That was all I needed. Then I started getting involved a bit more. And now, and even the teacher, Mr. Murphy, his name was, one. he was our form teacher as well. He was a wonderful man. Mr. Murphy, I gather... He's uh, head at another school now. Um, at, because I'd never really paid attention to any of it, I was doing illegal things in the rules. But he didn't do his shouting that he used to do at other people. You know, you know, I think you have to, if you drop the ball and kick it, I think there's a certain way you can't kick it. I can't remember. I can't remember now. I haven't watched rugby for years now. Um, and I kicked it and he, came, and he blew a whistle and he came over. All right, Redden, uh, no, you're not allowed to kick it that way. All right, mate, carry on. And, and it was a bit like that. Oh, yes. They couldn't bet part. How did we get onto the subject of rugby? Oh, yeah, you're talking about rugby. Watching it this morning. So there we are, William. I don't think I can run that far now. No, I do swimming now, you see. I do swimming now. I do 60 lengths in the pool most days. We've got to keep fit, dear. We've got to keep fit. Good morning to Stephen, who's watching uh, our video show in Australia this morning. Morning, Stephen. Uh, Mark Cording's with us. Good morning, Mark, in London. And Shania is listening as well on the Isle of Wight. So good morning to you, uh, Shania. All right. Now, um, ghastly programmes on the television at the moment that uh, uh, I have un unexpectedly become involved with. Only one programme. I was around my mate's house the other day and his other half loves trash television. And there were two particular Ghastly programmes on the television at the moment. Big Brother, of course. And I went up there on Tuesday night uh, on one of my nights off. And he's sitting there watching Big Brother. It was about ten past nine at night. Oh, my God. It was just awful. Um, uh, although, although the kitchen looked very nice. I have to say, I quite like the look of the kitchen in the Big Brother house at the moment. But what awful people just shouting and screaming. And the other awful programme at the moment, Love Island. Love Island, which seems to consist of rowing and, you know, bed antics. That's all it is. The same as Big Brother. Rowing and bed antics. Antics. Now, no doubtedly, these two programmes, along with the rest of the rubbish that's usually on the television, uh, The Only Way is Essex, um, Celebrity Get Me Out of Here, Housewife, old bags of Cheshire, that sort of thing. Now, presumably, these programmes do get some sort of ratings. And I just don't understand the sort of people that actually enjoy watching this rubbish. Because that is all it is. There is no talent whatsoever. It's all rowing and sleeping with each other. That's all it is. 
Do you watch one of these programmes? And if so, I'd dearly like to know why. If you're watching this programme when it's been recorded on a Saturday morning, then I'd love you to call in and tell me why you watch these programmes. The number's up there on the screen. 0208 344 If you're listening on Upload Radio, you can't call in. Lines are now closed, OK? But if you're watching the show on a Saturday morning, it's 020 844 Why on earth do you watch these programmes? Undoubtedly, the people on there, some of the people on there are very good looking. They've got nice bodies and all that. But would you actually want to go out with one of them? Because I think if you just remove the top part of their head and add a look inside, you would just see a nasty, greeny, browny, bubbling mess like a witch's cauldron. Yes, a melting! A melting! Ah! That's what you would see in there. Pretty on the outside and vile and disgusting on the inside. People mouthing off left, right and so And they're so blooming selfish. On this particular episode of Big Brother that I only saw bits of, I don't watch this, I promise you I don't watch this. They, they, these people, these, um, what are they called? Contestants? These contestants were told to line up in order of selfishness. I kid you not. They were told up to line up in order of selfishness. So at one end, you had who would be the most selfish person, which was uh, some young girl with an afro. I don't know what her name was. I don't know what their names are. And at the other end stood uh, an, an old bloke, um, Joe, I think his name was, from South London somewhere, who has... Who has got a recognisable face? I don't know if he's turned up at one of my karaoke's at some point. I'm sure he had eyeliner. Did he have eyeliner on? Did you see that? I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure he had eyeliner on or something like that. They were actually told to line up in order of selfishness. And the girl with the afro uh, was standing at the end. She said, I think I should stand sort of towards this end. Is everyone in agreement of that? And no one said anything. <laughs> She was hoping that someone says, oh, no, 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 you're not selfish. Come and stand a little bit further down the line. No, no one said anything. Isn't that awful? And why would you want people to know that? That's what gets me. Why would you want someone to know that, the, that you are a really selfish person by going on the telly and standing at the end of the line where it says, I am the most selfish person. It's just weird, isn't it? And then there was another girl who had to be a slave. And every time this boy ring, rings a bell, who apparently, at some point earlier, before the programme, had been with her, you know, doing it. <laughs> He'd been with this girl doing it. <laughs> And now she was on the programme, and uh, that's, what, that's, that's what my mate's other half told me. Because, of course, he knows them all. Oh, he knows them all inside out. Young lad, he is, 29 years old. He loves this sort of telly. The old Bags of Cheshire. Is that another programme? Or wherever they're from? The old Bags of Hollywood. The old Bags of New York City. Ghastly programmes. Have you seen the girls on there? I mean, how much face do you want done on your uh, work? Done, how much work do you want done on your face? Great big fat lips. I mean, what do they look like? They look awful. It amazes me the amount of people on television who have had facial surgery and you can see it from a mile off. Great big fat lips, <laughs> tight faces like this that don't move when they speak. And they think... It looks good. Do their friends tell them that as well? Is it like a thing, like, if you've got loads of money, then people just tell you what they think you want to hear? Is that what it is? <laughs> Why? I mean, can you just imagine your mother now? Your mother going out and having some sort of facelift and coming back and looking like some sort of monster. Maybe there are some of you that have got that. <laughs> Maybe some of you have got mums or dads that have had facial surgery 
and I don't mean to correct a problem. OK, don't come back to me. Oh, 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 you don't know that they had something wrong with their lips. Now, you know damn well what I'm talking about here. Don't try and be clever with me. Don't try and be all lefty with me, dear. Not to correct a dodgy eye or something like that. When they have face surgery just because they want to look a bit younger. And they come out of that surgery looking like a monster. Do you remember Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone's mum? What was her name? I remember seeing on her on the telly. My God! It looked like something from another planet, didn't it? Jackie, that's it. Jackie Stallone. What did she look like, dear? <laughs> well, on those old bags of Cheshire, New York, Las Vegas, wherever they're from, on those programmes, they've all had it done. And they look awful. <laughs> I don't know any old people that look like that who haven't had facial surgery. I don't know any elder, elderly people who look ugly who haven't had surgery. None. I don't know any. Honestly, I can't. Can't think of any at all. But they have that facial surgery. And some of them are so young as well. So young. And I do feel, going back to the Big Brother and the antics, the rowing, the sleeping with everyone, all that, you know, children are watching this stuff and they think it's quite acceptable to act like that. And I do wonder sometimes if that's why we have a problem these days with children in school shouting their mouths off, throwing things at teachers and all that, because they've seen all this stuff on the telly, on those ghastly people on the telly that you would never want to bump into in thousand, thousand years. And you see it going all, all around you, all the time, all the time. Go in the supermarket, stand there for an hour and watch people. Watch people, how rude they are to each other, how blooming self-centred. They are, aren't they? Go and stand outside for a while. Watch these people with prams. Think they can just go over your foot just because they got a buggy. I got a buggy. Think they can push it anywhere they want just because they've got a buggy and you haven't. What's all that about? People parking in disabled places, they don't give, they don't give a, a forex for anyone. Do they? And I'm sure a lot of this comes up from watching this stuff on the telly. I'm sure it does. Bring back Dad's Army. That's what I say. Bring back Dad's Army. Yes, indeed. Uh, Paul, good morning, Paul, who says, love watching The Only Way is Essex purely because I can get a buzz out of them arguing. How can you get a buzz out of people just rowing on the telly all the time? You should put on Prime Minister's Question Times, lovey. <laughs> That's always good for a laugh. We like Prime Minister's Question Time. Yes. Jake Riley's with us this morning. Good morning, Jake. Uh, Ray says, good morning. Just woke up from a night out. Uh, got asked to leave. Did you really? <laughs> well, that wouldn't have happened in Central Station, love. You've no need to go there anymore, Ray. You should have come to my night. My night at Central Station and come and sung some karaoke. Uh, good evening from Sydney. Matt Walker's watching the show today in Sydney. Morning, Matt. Uh, Craiger Bell as well. Really? Uh -huh, Craiger. I haven't seen you on here before. Greetings to you as well. OK, uh, one of the programs, um, well, there's, there's the other one, that Meat Market, the Meat Market, um, get me out, is it take me out, get me out? Have you seen that? Have you seen that on ITV on a Saturday night? Oh, God. So all these old baggages line up on the stage. The host comes down and then some bloke comes down, usually very fit looking, and he chooses one, and the stuff, they, they ask him questions and all that, uh, and they answer, you know, you, they usually answer with seductive type answers. So, you know, the question might be, I don't know, um, if, if I was coming round to your house, where would we go, and what would we do? And the girl's like, hmm, well, if I was come, if you were coming round to my house, I'd shut the door and wouldn't let you go. And everyone laughs and giggles. That is the state of entertainment now. Now, I have a little bit of good news, which may not be as good as it sounds. Coming back to your screens soon is this one. I'd, I'll, I'll do the music for you, OK? Da, 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 
这这这这这这这这这这这这这这这。Any idea? Go on. Dynasty is coming back to television. Are you excited? Well, hold on a minute. Now you may remember the excellent reboot series of Dallas, which unfortunately was taken off after three series. Very very disappointing. I really enjoyed. The new remake of Dallas.、Uh, a few years ago now, we had some of the original cast in there. Of course, Sue Ellen, Linda Gray. Have I mentioned to you that I have actually met her while she was at Wimbledon Theatre a couple of years ago? I wait. I stalked her. I stalked her. I waited outside the、uh, the stage door, and out she came. And I had a conversation with Sue Ellen from Dallas. Ba 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 ba. Do you remember? Oh, I loved her, and she was really nice. So she was in it, as indeed was、uh, Larry Hagman, Jr., who sadly died now a couple of years ago. He died midway through the series, didn't he?、Um, we had Bobby Ewing, <clears throat> and we had Ray Krebs, and of course Ken. Good old Ken was in there as well, as well as some excellent other characters. I really liked the mother, the mother of someone. I can't remember this. She was the mother of the bald guy. And she used to sniff cocaine. <laughs> oh dear, dear me! But it was an excellent reboot. Now the thing is, don't think that's going to happen with Dynasty. From what I've seen, now I've seen the trailer. It's not looking good to me. It really doesn't look good to me. The trailer, the trailer. Um, I don't see any original characters at all in it. I think they've completely done it back from the start.、Um, the music they were using on the trailer, which I, for me is a big part of TV shows, the music that was using on the trailer、um, was was completely different. And the trailer seemed to consist, although it's a drama, again, of people just fighting. And doing it with each other. <laughs> That's all it is. So I think we're going to be disappointed. I can't see it lasting. Although, with what people seem to enjoy on television now, and Dallas wasn't like that. Of course, there was a little bit of arguing and there was a little bit of, <laughs> but not to the extent what I've seen on the、uh, on the Dynasty trailer. So I don't know if we're going to like it. Although I will give it a go. I will give it a go. Um, don't think you're going to see it though on your normal TV channels. It's I, I gather it's been bought by Netflix. Netflix are going to be showing it. Okay, so coming soon, I think in October this year, the new series of Dynasty. I shall be I shall be watching it. <clears throat> I'm very much looking forward to watching that on Netflix. Now I don't have Netflix. I have my sister's、um, account. Did you know? And I found this very interesting, and I looked it up as well. Netflix do not mind you sharing accounts with family members. Did you know that? You have a look. Look, look it up yourself. I found that on the internet. <clears throat> What it is? My sister came round here、um, a couple of weeks ago when we had my uncle. Uncle's、uh, uncle was over from Australia, and、um, uh, she. When I went to work, she stayed in with with her husband. And、uh, she noticed I had the Netflix app on my、um, on one of my boxes downstairs, and、uh, she says, "Oh, have you got?" I said, "No, I haven't got Netflix." She said,、oh, "I'll put in my password. We'll watch something tonight." Okay, so we did that. Anyway, she went, and I was just looking the other day. I, thought, I wonder if that's still working, and it was. And you can have several family members on there, so that is quite this. That is permitted. Did you know that? Because I didn't know that. So I might have a little look at that.、Uh, I, I certainly will. Hopefully, watch.、Um, Uh, dynasty when it comes, and I gather is is Star Trek. Now where's Star Trek going? There's a new series of Star Trek coming out as well, isn't there? I'm not quite sure where that's going. When when is the new new series of Star? Let me look that up for you. New series of Star Trek. But if you have a look on, just type in Netflix family sharing. You are actually allowed to do that, which I didn't know.、Uh, here we go. Star Trek. This is on Star Trek TV show. Is that it? Um, ba ba ba. 
cheat cheat is it cheat cheat wikipedia cheat cheat it's going to be called star trek discovery okay and it will air ah it's coming on this year it's coming up in the autumn or as the as the americans say in the fall in the fall it's coming up this year boys and girls if it's going to be on cbs so <clears throat> i don't know where it's going to be on the uk and apparently the first time ever the lead character won't be the captain which will be interesting. So we're see and it says a Star Trek veteran is on board as a writer. Oh, we're not going to see any of the original ones. All oh, right, okay. So we'll see what happens with that. I'm looking forward to. It. I don't know if it's going to be on UK telly. My guess is it'll be picked up by Netflix or Amazon, one of those. Who like the old subscribers, don't they? Uh, morning to you, boys and girls. If you're just too honest, welcome along. It's Chris Wynn on United Kingdom Talk. Good morning to Johnny Key. Who joins us this morning? Good morning, Johnny. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, Christina Ewing. Okay, yes, you heard the name right. She's watching this morning. Good morning, Christina Ewing. Says, being originally from Texas and seeing my second home uh, at South Fork Ranch was nice. I think Dallas is more popular here uh, and uh, than in America. Well. I, I loved the new, I loved the old series of Dallas in the 80s. And when the new series came back, oh, well, it was like all my prayers were answered. But sadly, it only lasted three, three years, didn't it? They just didn't get the ratings. Uh, certainly here, <clears throat> it went on, I think it was Channel 5, and they put it on at 9 o'clock night. And it started with something like just over a million viewers, which for Channel 5 was actually quite good. But by the time it finished, it went down to like 200,000. It was really low. And I don't, I don't understand why. It was well made. The characters were good. It was well written. And I don't know why that didn't take off. I really don't. Really don't. Uh, Christina says, Morning, your show is much more interesting than Question Time or ITV reality television. Thank you, Christina. I think so as well. <clears throat> I like to listen to my own shows non-stop when I'm not doing anything, to be honest, Christina. <laughs> if you're watching or listening to a recording of the show, don't forget you can always leave a message. Uh, you can email the show, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, or you can send us a Facebook message. Once again, my Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK, all right? Facebook username, Chris Reardon UK. Just do a, 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 a send a message type thing there um, as well, all right? So Dynasty coming back. Uh, Star Trek. I'm looking forward to the Star Trek series. And let me see if I can find... Would that, we'll stop. We'll Star Trek be on in the UK. I do hope so. Does it say? Ah, net, there you go, Netflix. That's going to be on Netflix as well. It's going to be released weekly, it says, because I think sometimes on Netflix, you know, you get a, get a new TV series and they put the whole lot up there at once. I think that spoils it in a way, don't you? Remember the times when you was a child and, um, say, Star Trek would be on at, I don't know, 8 o'clock on a Monday night or something, and the whole weekend you was excited... <clears throat> And getting ready to watch Star Trek, wasn't you? I mean, when they released the whole thing at once, like I think they call it a boxed set. I think that kind of spoils it a little bit. I really do. Anyway, boys and girls, uh, we'll take a short break here. In part two, news readers, old and new. Ever wondered what happened to some of them and who were your favourites? That's coming up in part two, boys and girls. You're listening to Chris Reardon and United Kingdom Talk here on Upload Radio. There we are. Part one done, boys and girls. Part one done. Let me clear my nose. All right. Oh, worn out, lovey. Worn out. Right, part two. So we're going to do um, news readers. News readers, part, past and present. And there's a reason we're doing that as well. Where's that now? Let's get my bits of paper together here. You're right. Are you having a nice day? What is it? It's 11 o'clock. I'll, I'll uh, do my show. I'm going to go swimming later on as well. Now, where's that thing there? There it is. I found it. I found it. Found it, mummy. Found it. Ready for part two. Here we go. <clears throat>
And welcome back, boys and girls. It's Chris Reardon with this week's United Kingdom Talk here on Upload Radio. Now, don't you love it when things go wrong on the television? I love it. Absolutely love it. And last week, I don't know if you were watching the BBC 10 o'clock news. Boop, 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 bum, 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 boop. But I can't remember the music now. How's it go? Oh, it's lots of drums, isn't it? And lots of pips. That's all I remember. Well, the 10 o'clock news went wrong this week. It was very, very exciting. And it went wrong for about four minutes. I don't know what happened. It was on in a very hot day. But I don't, I don't think stuff starts going wrong when it overheats. It just stops working completely. And poor old Hugh Edwards was sitting in this chair, looking down like that with a pen. And now and again, he was writing something down. And for four minutes, it keep cutting from Tom, uh, Hugh Edwards uh, to the little opening video. And it said breaking news. And that flashed up on the screen. Then there was a picture of a coffin came up. <laughs> which I think Hugh Edwards probably thought that was his career going down. Did anyone see it? Oh, it was hilarious. It's, you'll find it on YouTube. A lot of people have taken uh, the, the video and uploaded it to YouTube there. Uh, what else was in it? I think there was a picture of the the, the terrible block of flats that, um, uh, that burnt down uh, a while, a few days ago now, wasn't it? It was a couple of weeks ago now and all that sort of thing. And it just wasn't working. And in the end, uh, suddenly the camera went in and it started zooming and it started and it worked. Poor, but this, it wasn't like a 10 second job. Oh no, this went on for four or five minutes. <laughs> but we love it when things go wrong like that, don't we? And who can remember their favourite newsreader? I'm sure there's one or two. Let's just do a couple of messages coming in there uh, this morning. Good morning to Lee, who says, enjoyed your karaoke stream last night. Thank you, Lee. Uh, we do do karaoke streams, boys. When I do my karaoke nights, and I do one, two, I do three a week at the moment. Uh, I'm available on Thursdays. Thursdays or Tuesdays. If you know anywhere that might want a karaoke night or a quiz night, not DJing, because I'm fed up with it. I don't want to do DJing anymore. Um, so karaoke or quiz nights. If you know anywhere that wants a Thursday night, then please send us a private message, perhaps on, on Facebook. Facebook username is Chris Reardon UK, facebook.com, Chris Reardon UK, or an email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. They're my uh, uh, contact details there. If you want one on a Thursday or a Tuesday somewhere that you might know somewhere, then do let us know. Uh, Lee says, enjoy, uh, and we do stream live our karaoke things on Facebook Live. Um, Lee says, morning, enjoyed karaoke last night last night. Was it drag queen evening? No, they'd all been filming. They'd all been filming. They're in a TV programme, but they weren't allowed to tell me what it was. I mean, you'd think one of them would whisper in my ear, wouldn't you? But no. No. Well, didn't they look good? Wonderful costumes. Wonderful. Good morning to Julian Clark. Good morning, Julian, who's, uh, who lives abroad in Espa I think Spain. Is it Spain or Tenerife? 34 degrees there. Oh, well, we had that last week. No, we, we hope we don't have that too much uh, 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 in the near future. <clears throat> and good morning to Paul Adamson, who's watching the show in Amsterdam. Good morning, Paul, who says, uh, Chris Wimbledon Paul, can we give a shout out to our great military people as it's Armed Forces Day in Liverpool today? Fly past on those planes. How fantastic. Oh, and the tornadoes and all that. Fly pasts and all that great stuff. Typically, the BBC can't be bothered to put a show on for it. Oh, really? Oh, that's a shame. Is it not on the telly anywhere? You would think that would be on the telly. Used to be, didn't it? All that sort of stuff. I still miss morning service on a Sunday. Oh, I used to love all the hymns. I mean, we got songs of praise, but it's not the same with that little Welsh boy. What's his name? You know, the one who sung the, the winter thing. We're walking in the air. That one. It's quite good at those religious programmes, isn't it? Songs of praise from the Royal Albert Hall. I quite like that. Very rousing. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. And you've got the whole band there. And I love it, dear. I love it. I think they should do morning service from Corpus Christi Church in Wokingham, where I go to on Sundays, nine o'clock. Yes, I could host it. Don't you think I would be excellent hosting a religious show? And a very good morning to you, boys and girls. Welcome to the Corpus Christi Church in Wokingham, where we present Morning Mass with Father David. Yeah, I love it. 
I could do that. I could do that. Uh, Malorca. Thank you, Julie. Malorca. That's right. Yes. Good morning to Terry H, who's also joining us this morning. Morning, Terry. So your favourite news readers, whatever happened to them? A lot of them disappeared. I have made a small list here of my personal favourite news readers. Now, if you've got one and you want to come in and tell me about them, then there is a phone line open, boys and girls. Not if you're listening on Upload Radio. I'm afraid if you're listening on the radio, you can't call in. OK, but if you're watching us live, you can call in. The phone number is 020 3477 It's up there on the screen, OK? 020 3477 Thank you. Lee says, Ala Jones said, we're walking in the air. It's Ala Jones, a little boy from Wales. He's a bit old now, though, isn't he? A bit old. Not as old as me. But he looks older. Isn't it funny how many, how many people look much older than me? Don't you think, Lovey? So here we go. In alphabetical order, we got Richard Baker. Do you remember Richard Baker? 1970s, 1980s. He was the first to read the BBC television news in 1954. Did you know that? In voiceover. He was the first one. He continued to work as a newsreader until he retired in 1982. So all that time, before 64, 74, it's like 28 years he read the news for. Such a recognisable face. He also presented the BBC coverage of the proms for many years, as well as Start the Week, Baker's Dozen on Radio 4, in addition to narrating the children's series Teddy Edwards and Mary Munger and Midge. Do you remember that? Mary Munger and Midge. They lived in a tall block of flats, didn't they? And the little mouse used to jump on to... Uh, Mary was the girl. Mungo was the do dog. And Midge was the little mouse. <laughs> Wonderful TV program. But the mouse couldn't reach the button to open the lift. So it used to jump on the dog, I think. And then it used to jump on the dog's nose. And from there, it was able to push the lift button. Because the dog was a big old dog. It was a big old... I think I saw some of them in the supermarket the other day. It was a big old dog, that was. <laughs> um, I remember uh, Michael Barrett. Now, not quite newsreader, but he was the main anchor on an excellent TV show called Nationwide, which was on between 1969 and 1977. Do you remember the music to that? And they used to have this logo, which was something spinning around with Nationwide and NW written on it. And it would go round and round, but I could never work out how it was. Sometimes it wouldn't quite spin centrally. Do you see what I mean? It wouldn't be turning. It was kind of off centre. And I used to think to myself, could it be that this symbol is simply something with a nail in the middle and they haven't, sometimes they don't set it up right? <laughs> I mean, I don't suppose it would happen now, not with computers, because all this stuff would be done on computers now. But they didn't have that then. So someone had filmed a bit of paper going around, taken a picture, moved it a bit, taken a picture, moved it a bit, and then made that into a film, you see. That's how they did those things in those days. Very, very clever. Michael Barrett was the anchor man. Uh, I liked him. He had a, like, a, a dry sense of humour and a lovely smile. We really did. Uh, he was also a, a reporter on Midlands Today, presenter at a number of other television and radio programmes. Songs of Praise, he did Songs of Praise. Praise my soul, the king of heaven. I was asked to be in the choir several times, you know. Yes, several times. Thank you. Gardner's question time. Um, and he was married to former uh, nationwide presenter Dillis Morgan. Do you remember her? I think she had short blonde hair. Dillis. Dillis. Now, is she Welsh? Is that a Welsh name, Dillis? <laughs> Raymond Baxter. Oh, Yes. He was very popular in the 70s, wasn't he? He also was alongside Richard Dimbleby on many occasions, most notably during the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II in 1953, but best known as the main presenter on that excellent TV show that's not on anymore, Tomorrow's World. Ba, 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 da, 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 ba, ba, ba. Oh, I love Tomorrow's World. 
Loved it. All new gadgets and things like that. I remember seeing CDs on there. When CDs first were, were about to come out, they showed you this was the replacement for the record. It was a little silver thing, a little CD, and it's indestructible. They said it was indestructible. And this bloke, he got jam, put the jam on the CD, dropped it on the floor, stood on it, washed it under a tap, and then it played. Why didn't CDs actually work out like that? It's so easy to damage. I find it easier to start damage a CD than it was a record. Wonderful. Frank Boff. Oh, who can forget Frank Boff? So popular. Host also of Grandstand. And Nationwide as well. Da, 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 da. No more Grace. No, no, we don't have Grace Grandstand anymore, do we? No, it's because the blooming Sky and BT Vision, they nicked all the sports. We never used to pay for all this stuff when we were children. We just watched it. It came on the telly, free of charge. Grandstand with the great Frank Boff. Ba, 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 ba. A world of sport with Dickie Davis. Da, da, da. Da, 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 Followed by Land of Giants, of course. Excellent programmes. He also hosted, of course, BBC Breakfast Time. I watched the very first one in 1983. Da, 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 da. It was nice. Breakfast Time. They walked all over the ITV's version, didn't they? TVAM. Dear, dear me. Good morning to Lily Shambles saying, does this thing work? Of course it works. Of course it works. Good morning, Kevin Webster this morning. Paul Adamson, Frank Sniff Sniff Boff, you mean. Frank Boff. He got involved in something very strange, didn't he? <laughs> but we, I still love him. Who cares? Did that affect his performance on the telly? No, he was excellent. Bring back Frank Boff. That's what I say. We want to see Frank Boff. Um... Sir Alistair Burnett, he was like kind of the head one on ITV, didn't he? On IT, ITN. When the news on ITN was respected all over the world. And then some idiot started cutting money, didn't they? But it's a, such a shame how some of these great institutions have been chipped away at by the money men. It really is. Sir Alistair Burnett, presenter and reporter on Panorama, general election coverage during the early 1970s. Also presented coverage of Princess Anne and Captain Mark Phillips' wedding in 1973. Uh, rejoined ITN in 1976 as the main host on News at 10. Da 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 John Craven. You remember John Craven reading the children's news? Da da da. Uh, how did that go? Da na 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 na. Da na 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 na. John Craven's news round. Long serving presenter of the pioneering children's news programme, John Craven's News Round from 1972 to 1989. The programme was later renamed News Round. He was also a regular co pro presenter on Multicoloured Swap Shop. Do you remember that? With Noel Edmonds, swap shop. Ba -da, da -da 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 da 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 That was good. That was, and Saturday Superstore. He left in 1989. Is now on Country File, which is that's a nice program, isn't it? Hey, if you want a nice, relaxing, a relaxing Sunday night, just turn on your telly. Sunday night, flick it over to BBC One and watch. Country file. That's nice. Don't forget this phone line open, boys and girls. If you want to talk about any of this, you've got a favourite newsreader, call in 0208 144 It's a local London number, not a premium rate number. Okay. 0208 144 One of my favourite newsreaders um, was murdered. Jill Dando. Do you remember Jill Dando? It's quite some time ago. You'd be surprised how long ago this is now. Uh, she became presenter of various national BBC news programmes as well as others including Holiday and Crime Watch, until she was worded in 1999. It really is that long ago. I remember hearing the news on that, and um, they spoke to her neighbours at the time and said there was... Um, uh, they, they suddenly heard a scream and a, and a bang, and they went out there 
And there she was lying there in a pool of blood, Jill Dando. Great news, really. She was wonderful, she was. Uh, Paul Adamson says Trevor McDonough. Yeah, I remember Trevor. I remember Trevor McDonough. Yes, Paul. Uh, not one of my favourites, I've got to say. Bit miserable. Comes across as a bit miserable on the telly. I fixed his phone, you know. Yes. He got in a lovely house, I fixed his phone, but it wasn't very talkative, unfortunately. Uh, Anna Ford, you remember Anna Ford? She presented the BBC Six O'Clock News. Now that had a wonderful theme song um, from 1989 until 1999. She presented the One O'Clock News from 1999 until 2006. Also worked across other BBC news programmes, having been the first female news reader at ITN. I got a lot of this stuff off the uh, Wikipedia site, boys and girls. Uh, but... Um, in in the 70s and 80s, all the... Uh, uh, let me just see if I can find the music for that for you. Let's, let's see if I can... Yes, there it is. There it is there. I can find that there. Um, all, these, all these news programmes had their own themes. Not like now, where everything is generally the same theme, isn't it? You know, lots of drums and that beep, beep, beep going all through it. BBC Six O'Clock News theme was excellent. It wasn't my favourite one. I've got my favourite one. I'm going to play you that in a second. This was the BBC's news theme in, in the 1980s for the Six O'Clock News. Here we go, boys and girls, the Six O'Clock News. Here we go. Oh, hang on a minute. That's wrong. Now, that don't look right. Uh, just a minute. Da, da, da. Is that it? Is that it? Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here, come, here comes the news. Here comes the news. Right. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we love it. Isn't that wonderful? It's on YouTube. Get this off YouTube. The six o'clock news from the BBC with Sue Lawley and Nicholas Witchell. Sue Lawley. Oh, I love it. I love these old theme tunes. That's not my favourite one. That's coming up. I can hear you getting very excited. Oh, yes. And Sue Lawley, of course. She was one of the main BBC news people. Really posh. I liked her. I liked her. Sue Lawley presented Nationwide also during the 1970s. The 9 o'clock news, 1983 to 84. And the 6 o'clock news, it launched in 1984 uh, with Nicholas Witchell. He comes across as a bit miserable, doesn't he? Nicholas Witchell. He, I think he does the royal reporting now. He does all the royal reporting, doesn't he? On the BBC News Channel. She went on to present Deaths at Isle of Discs, but she left the BBC. Um, and I remember uh, uh, hosting the news one night, the six o'clock news, and they got invaded, didn't they, by lesbian Avengers? Where and they were um, uh, wanted to talk about gay rights. They were they were on there. God knows how they got into the studio, but they were there talking about gay rights and all this. And I think this was, was at the time with Thatcher's government and the uh, Section Twenty Eight something. I can't remember what it was all now. Uh, but yeah, they got they broke into the studio. And she carried on. She says, I'm ever so sorry about the noise. We've been somewhat invaded. <laughs> we'll carry on. <laughs> I love it. Lily Shambles says, a question for you. When you want to watch old 60s and 70s programmes on iPlayer, it says you can buy them. But did people not pay for them by licence fee in the first place? So why do we have to pay again? Um, I don't know, Lily. Ask the BBC. They never used to be like that. You can find a lot of stuff on YouTube, though, Lily, that you don't need to pay for, darling. I don't pay for any subscription telly. I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay for any subscription telly. I refuse to pay for it, no. Good morning to Michael Milner. Good morning to Michael. All right, I hope you're very well, Michael. All right, so that's Sue Lawley. Kenneth Kendall. Who remembers a Kenneth Kendall? Another newsreader who you would sit there and watch him and listen to what he had to say. And he spoke and you listened. I don't think that the newsreaders of the day have got that. I really don't. Sometimes, especially um, there's a guy, um, there's a, there's a chap on there, Simon McCoy. Simon McCoy reads those. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't dislike him. I think he's all right, you know. But he he keeps chucking in these jokes, and they just don't work. <laughs> he's very likable, very very likable, but he doesn't have the. What's, what's the word? The Oh, I can't think of the word now. The authority. He doesn't have the authority of people like Kenneth Kendall, Richard Baker. He just doesn't have that authority. 
he reads the news and you like him and he's good at it, except for the jokes that he keeps saying. I'm not good with jokes, dear. People tell jokes and I'm like, oh, right. They're usually not funny, unless it's someone like Roy Chubby Brown. I love the fact he's completely and utterly non-politically correct. We love Roy Chubby Brown. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so, yes, we've got Kenneth Kendler. He, of course, went off to um, do uh, Treasure Hunt with Annika Rice. Annika, where are you, Annika? Oh, I've just fallen out of a helicopter. <laughs> Kenneth Kendall. He was the first to read the news in front of uh, a camera, actually, at uh, BBC television in 1955. He retired in 1981 from the BBC, uh, presented Trevor's Trevor. I didn't know he died. 2012, uh, Kenneth Kendall died. So here's one of my favourite newsreaders of all time, Jan Leeming. Jan Leeming, BBC newsreader in the 1980s, covering most of all of the main bulletins. She had previously been a presenter on Pebble Mill at One. Da, 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 Pebble Mill at One. Westwood Television and HTV News. And Jan Leeming, she hosted uh, the Eurovision Song Contest one, one year when it was um, in Harrogate. I always remember that year, you know, Eurovision Song Contest... No disrespect from the people at Har uh, in Harrogate, but do you not think it should have been in London or Manchester or Glasgow or Cardiff or Belfast? I mean, Harrogate. <laughs> it's just the weirdest thing ever. Wherever it was in the country, generally it was in the big city. Uh, Israel held it in, in, in Jerusalem. Where else would you expect Israel to host the Eurovision? You know, Jerusalem. France had it in Paris, and we had it Harrogate. <laughs> when they when it when it came on, I thought, why is it in Harrogate? Don't get it. Should be in London or one of the other major cities in the UK. Not Harrogate. Anyway, she hosted it. I think she did the one in Harrogate, and then of course, more recently, she was on the Jungle. Jungle uh, celebrity thing where they eat nasty things. Well, I think she was on that recently, wasn't it? She was one of my favourite newsreaders. Really nice lady. Really nice. And again, when she spoke, you listened. It wasn't all namby pamby. It was what you know, authority. That's what we want, Jan. Angela Rippon, of course, the first female newsreader of the BBC Nine O'clock News. Now here it comes, boys and girls. Here it comes. My favourite, my favourite news theme of all time is the BBC Nine O'Clock News from the 1980s. Here it comes. The Nine O'Clock News from the BBC with Michael Burke and Philip Hayton. Wonderful graphics. Oh, yeah. The world's worst oil. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The best, that's my favourite one. Now, look that one up on YouTube when I finish the show today because it's got the most wonderful graphics. If you type in BBC 9 o'clock news, titles July the 7th, 1988, you will find the graphics coming up there and they all fly towards the TV screen. It's wonderful. Oh, Lily says she's seen Roy Chubby Brown live. Do you like that, do you? Roy Chubby Brown as well. He's hilarious, isn't he? Absolutely hilarious. You can just imagine the left, the Labour left loonies on that one, can't you? Oh, oh can't go and say, oh, no. Oh, I can't believe he's saying such terrible, terrible things. Because they don't get comedy. They don't get comedy. The hard left, I'm afraid. They don't get it at all. Oh, no, can't say anything like that. Might offend someone. Well, don't go then. It's like watching this show. If you don't like it, turn it off. Not interested in complaints. You can send complaints by email if you want. Then I can print them in and use them uh, in the bathroom as, as paper to wipe various things down. <laughs> That's what I use. <laughs> Andrew Rippon, wonderful. Um, she was the BBC Nine O'Clock News when she was appointed in 1975. Uh, left to join TVAM. That was a disaster, wasn't it? Do you remember that? TVAM. When the BBC Breakfast uh, was up and running, they had a two-week start, I think. And then TVAM started. With all these stars, there was him. Uh, sorry, there was uh, Angela Rippon. 
I think Anna Ford was there. Um, Dimbleby, Jonathan Dimbleby, maybe, I think, or David Dimbleby. I'm not sure which one. And they opened with these five massive stars. No one liked it. They didn't like it. And it was an absolute disaster. <clears throat> Everyone was watching Frank Buff and Selena Scott. <laughs> oh, that went terribly wrong. Anyway, so that was that. Uh, talking of Selena Scott, of course, another one of my favourites. One of the first main presenters at Breakfast Time on its launch in 1983. She had previously been a newsreader on ITN News at 10 and later co-present the, the Clove Show. I don't know that one. Clove Show. We're just getting to my favourite newsreader of all time. You ready? There's only two more. Are you bored with this yet? <laughs> Don't forget the email to the show. Chris at United Kingdom Talk. .co.uk is my email address or send us uh, a Facebook message, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Paul Adamson says, how could you not mention Roland Rat? Oh, come on. A Roland Rat saved TVAM, didn't he? He actually saved TVM because no one wanted to see these, the big five. They call themselves the big five. And it didn't work. They replaced them with a puppet. Roland Rat. They replaced these five with a puppet. Roland Rat. Can you believe that? <laughs> and it worked. I don't think they ever crawled back the, the viewers that they lost to um to Frank and Selena. But, but, but it picked up, didn't it? Yeah. Here we go. Is is two more for you. And I'll finish you with my favourite one. Valerie Singleton. Our vow. Who cannot love Valerie Singleton? Presenter on the late evening TV news programme tonight from 1975. She was also a regular anchor on Nationwide, PM and the Money programme and previously spent 10 years as a presenter on... Blue Peter. With, of course, iconic people, Peter Purvis and the lovely John Noakes, who we lost just a couple of weeks ago. Didn't we lose John Noakes? I was sad. I was, I was really sad at that. Really sad losing John Noakes. That really is like losing a member of your family. One of those two. No disrespect to Peter Purvis. He was a great host and all that. But, but for me, Valerie Singleton and John Noakes. Losing one of those, or and also Tony Blackburn, actually. Tony Blackburn, to me as well, is like a member of the family. He rang me up on my, on my show a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? That was nice. But those three are like part of the family. To lose John Noakes, oh, I was so upset about that. So, uh, Valerie Singleton. And finally... My favourite one of all time, Moira Stewart. I loved Moira Stewart. Presented many of the main news bulletins, including News Afternoon, the 6 o'clock news and the 9 o'clock news. During a long career, she was dropped from her weekend slot by the BBC in 2007, leading to accusations of ageism, although she joined BBC Radio 2 in 2010. Um, that was on the Chris Evans show, wasn't it? She does the news on the Chris Evans show. I don't know if she still does it, uh, on which she's been a newsreader before her moved into television. Uh, she's also been one of the original presenters on the Adventure Game. But she was my favourite one, Moira Stewart. And I'm, she needs to be brought back rather than these namby-pamby ones they've got on now. You, you know, you watch them, they read the news, but do you believe them? Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. Well, boys and girls, that's it for our Upload Radio show today. Thank you very much for listening to the show. Don't forget, you can send us a message. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, or join me on Facebook, Facebook username, again, Chris Reardon UK. Have a lovely week, and I'll see you again, hopefully same time next week. Bye-bye now. There we are. All done, boys and girls. That's it. There's our Upload Radio show done. Isn't that good? Good. I'm quite pleased with that show. Done. No one called in, though, did I? Good job I can sit here and talk without having to worry about phone calls. Oh, dear, you could have called in today. I haven't gone, Christina. I'm about to go in a minute, but not quite yet. <laughs> we have a little bit. We carry on a little bit more. Not too much more. Uh, but there was another couple of things I wanted to talk about today. Um, one being 
Now let me find uh, where where was my thing? There it is. Uh, the dreadful people at Ascot. Anyone seen those in the newspaper this week? Awful. I don't know what sort of people they're letting in. Now Ascot, you would think that was sort of well run and and looked after, and they only let nice, well behaved people in there. But no, no. An example, in the sun this morning, a bare-chested Royal Ascot reveller. I mean, bare-chested. Do you have any decorum about you? I would have slung him straight out. Bring the security over and sling him straight out. Just awful. A bare-chested Royal Ascot reveller who brawled with another racegoer said yesterday it was all over a chair, apparently. Dad of four. I mean, Dad, come on. Dad of four, you'd think you would know better, wouldn't you? Fighting like that. 47 years old. Come on. He's heard shouting, let's finish it off. Security separated him and another man as onlookers filmed on phones in the £75 a ticket Queen Anne enclosure. David, who's with his wife Sally, and this is in the news, I'm just reading you out from the sun today. Some guys started on us, I sat on someone else's chair, so a fight broke out. I mean, honestly, well, I wouldn't want to go there. And there he is with his top off. All this fat hanging out. He should come to Slimmer's World with me, I reckon. I mean, what is it What is it that makes people want to just fight all the time like that? Oh, they've had a couple of drinks. We well, should bloody well know how to behave in front of people like that. Awful. Awful, awful, awful. Anyway, that's that news story. The other news story I wanted to um, uh, do this morning was about this this cladding business. Of course, we had the big fire. Um, is it? Is it? Must be. It's over a week ago now in uh, in um, Kensington, wasn't it? In Kensington, and um, I I have to say I'm very 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 impressed with Camden Council, right? Who immediately they must have moved so quickly immediately after the fire have gone around to their own tower blocks. Camden, if you're outside the UK, you won't know, but Camden isn't really close to Knightsbridge. They're, they're separate parts of London uh, with, with quite a distance in between them. And they immediately started checking their blocks and found that same dodgy cladding on some of their blocks. Last night, they decided to move everyone out. Literally, move everyone out or, or advise everyone to move out of these blocks of flats. Now, they're doing this for the people's own safety. You would think people would listen to that, wouldn't you? But it was some bloke on the telly this morning. This is a bit of a need for a joke reaction. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying in my flat. Now, wouldn't you think there would be a reason to move people out. That reason being, if that cladding catches fire, and it could, could happen tomorrow, it could happen in 10 years' time, or it might not happen at all. But if it does, you're likely to be burnt alive in that flat, like the all those 70-odd people over in Knightsbridge. Kensington, sorry, Kensington. Kensington and Knightsbridge are sort of very close to each other. Now I'm going back to my flat. And then some other woman moaning there who was having a go at the council official when she'd come out because they said earlier that it was safe and now they were saying it was unsafe. Well, for God's sake, woman, they're telling you now it's unsafe. OK, so they weren't sure before, but they're telling you now. So why on earth are you moaning? Get out! It's for your own safety. But no, they just stand there and they moan even when people are trying to help them. They just stand there and they moan and they moan and they moan. Quite honestly, a, a, a lot of these people, of course, are very poor people, you know, and perhaps they live in these uh, flats, um, not paying rent, but paying uh, the, uh, the social pay for the flats. That's OK. I don't have a problem with that. What I do have a problem with is when people help them and give them things. People are given stuff all the time and they still continue to moan and moan and moan. What is all that about? 
You know, no one ever gives me anything for nothing. Sometimes people do little favours. Of which I am, oh, I always make sure they know how grateful I am for these little favours that are being done. Like the lovely Maureen when she used to make me sandwiches. She doesn't anymore. I had to ask her to stop because of my Slimming World thing. But people moan and moan and moan, even when they're assisted or helped in some way. And I, ju I just don't get that at all. I really don't get that. But you would think, you would think these people, when told that they were living in a dangerous flat, would want to get out. The council had put them in hotels, um, bed and breakfasts, in the community centre with, with beds on, they've provided little beds on the floor. OK, it's, it's not good. I would hate it. I would hate that, having to move into a, a library or some sort of community centre and sleep on the floor on an airbed. But isn't that better than being burnt to death? Don't understand people sometimes at all. I really don't. Right, that's it for the show today. We're going to do our birthdays now, but good morning to Vectis who apologises for not ringing in. Thank you, Vectis. Couldn't call in. I was doing the shopping. Are you doing shopping today? What? Dear me. I don't have the staff to do it like your right-wing Tories. <laughs> Excuse me, I don't have staff to do my shopping. I like to go around shopping, Waitrose. Thank you. And Julian Clark says John Lokes died in hospital um, over there. That's right, Alzheimer's. I know. I know. Was that, was that a big news story over there, Julian, or not? Where you live? I wonder if it was. Right, let's do today's birthdays, boys and girls, and then uh, we'll disappear. Uh, happy birthday today to Philip Holden. Happy birthday, Philip. Not seen you for a while. Happy birthday, sir. Clive Fuller today is 53 years old today. Elliot James Begley, a very young 23 today. Happy birthday, Elliot. Aaron Johns, who spends most of his time down the gym, gym now, I think, don't you, Aaron? Wearing Speedos. 31 years old today. Happy birthday, Aaron. Carl Royce. Very good friend of mine uh, used to come down to Belushi's in Hammersmith when I was DJing and doing the karaoke there uh, a few years ago now. 42 today. Happy birthday, Carl. Thomas Ferdinands, 22 years old today. Happy birthday to Thomas. Uh, we've got Paul Fitzgerald's birthday. Happy birthday, Paul. And James Palmer as well. They're all the birthdays today, boys and girls. to you happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to you all right gang happy birthday happy birthday happy birthday to you i've just got a couple of more things to ring out for you read out for you today uh there's a show going on boys and girls there's a show going on at the moment um and where is it now um it's queerlesque which is being held at Pulse, uh, which is a nightclub. XXL is held there as well. Pulse nightclub in Blackfriars or Blackfriars on the 28th and 29th of June. So that's next week. OK, uh, if you'd like to go and say that it's a camp queer realness kind of show. Right. So if you're interested in that, uh, once again, it's queerlesque. At Pulse at Blackfriars on the 28th and 29th of June. All right. Uh, show starts at eight o'clock. And uh, is a camp queer realness kind of show uh, produced by a very good friend of mine, Spike Road. So that's happening next week. Go along to see that if you want to. And uh, yes, uh, Julian says, yes, um, a few years ago. Ah, yes, um, uh, about John Noakes there. A few years ago, he went walkabout and it was a large search party to find him. But his name wasn't revealed at the time. Yes, we remember seeing that in a paper over here. Uh, but uh, John Noakes was wonderful. And finally today, Christina Urin writes, Chris, could you remind people, listeners all over the world, it's Armed Forces Day today all over the country. Portsmouth is having big city uh, day events uh, down on the seafront and the historical dockyard, London area, especially in West London, are having family parades and child pet friendly events. Plus Liverpool, as previous mentioned. So today is Armed Forces Day here in the UK. That's it for the show today, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining me. Oh, you're over. Sorry, I've got the wrong blooming thing there. That's it. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, tomorrow night, let me just uh, go further ahead to tomorrow night. It's Sunday night tomorrow. I do hope someone will, some of you will be able to join us at our excellent Sunday night karaoke. 
at uh, the Camden Eye in Camden Town. Come out of Camden Shoe Station, walk across the road, it's there. 10 seconds walk away from the tube station. It's a really good night, 8 till 11 o'clock, every Sunday night, karaoke at the Camden Eye. Uh, have a nice Saturday, and I'll see you again very soon. Thanks for watching and listening. Cheerio now. Thank you.